to the Chat Cafe, where real students talk about real issues. I'm Halima Adekoya, and today we're talking about surviving predators. With all that's going on in society with sexual predators, kidnapping, rape, and etc., how can you feel safe every day, whether traveling to school or to the mall with friends, basically during our everyday lives? So I have a question for you guys. How do you feel as a millennial living in the society today? Do you feel as if the world protects your rights? No, <laughs> honestly, no, because it comes to a situation where with, okay, as a minority, because I'm Hispanic, right, and female, you kind of feel like in situations where walking in the street alone is like very terrifying. So, and then you know, like, if something were to happen, would it be blamed on you? Like, it was because what she was wearing Ooh, or like okay. things like that. So that's an interesting topic. Um, I know many people who feel as if they've, they've been in situations where they were asked, oh, why were you there? Or why were you wearing this? Mm -hmm. And you see it all the mm -hmm. time on Twitter mm -hmm. when you see grown men talking about 16-year-olds. I saw it recently with Deja, T.I.'s daughter. They were like, but why does she look like that? Why does she have all that makeup on? Right. And it's like, but wait, why are you working? So worried about what I'm right, why are you right. so worried about where's the line yeah. between me yeah. and you and what you're what you're taught mm -hmm. and then how I respect that. I feel yeah. like um, like especially females use like clothes or makeup as like a form of self expression. Right. So when like these events happen and they're like, oh she was wearing that, like it's kind of like taking away our own form of like our artistic yes. expression. Like even if it's not for that, like we have a freedom to wear what we want and like when things are being blamed on us for what we're wearing, I feel like that's really unfair. Yeah, and at the end of the day, I don't dress for the next person. I don't dress to impress somebody mm -hmm. else. So what I want to wear is what I want to wear. At the end of the day, whether it's provocative to whoever, you're mm -hmm. supposed to mind your business. So what I'm wearing, like you should, it, it doesn't warrant you grabbing me or warrant you trying to rape me or trying to sexually harass me just because of what I'm wearing. Mm -hmm. Go on about your day and not go on about my day. You know, it simple. Also, it, it comes back to a fault where like in situations where I know I'm at fault at this, where you see a girl online, right? And she honestly could look like she's like 27 or mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. Turns mm -hmm. out she's like 15. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah. then you start thinking like your inner mom is like in your head, like, why are you wearing that? Mm -hmm. Why are you mm -hmm. doing this? But then it comes back like, why am I judging yeah. if I, I don't like being that. judged? Yes. Okay, I yes. respect So like you need that. to realize that you're also that. in the wrong as well, even yeah. though like, so. And it takes a lot of courage to admit, like, when you're in the wrong for judging someone on the way they look, especially on so social media, because you don't know what that picture could mean. Mm -hmm. You don't know what that video could mean. They may be 15 looking like a 27-year-old, but you never know if they got, like, a modeling career already or something yeah, like that. So you just true. never know. Okay, so um, let me see. Women, men, women, do you feel as if your rights are protected? No. no. Okay, men. Guy, <laughs> do you feel as if your right is protected? For me, um, personally, no, but as men, yes. Okay, all right. So have you or any of your friends ever experienced sexual harassment or inappropriateness at school, outside of school, that just made you step back and like, excuse me? <laughs> I actually um, had an experience last year where I was wearing nothing too provocative, but my piece of my stomach was showing and I had a jacket over it like mm -hmm. trying to cover it up and I was walking down the hallway and some guy said something and I was like that was really rude and I came back to class and I was like yeah like that guy just said something to me that was horrible and the teacher was like well look what you're wearing and I was like wow <laughs> yeah yeah and I like last year I feel like I kind of like blew it off my shoulder like whatever but now that I think about it like that she has no right to mm -hmm. say that exactly. to me it, she it, she did it. She yeah. did not. Have, she okay. did not. Have. That's, that's a big thing, especially when you. That's like a learning point when you know you like you. Sometimes you just have to stick up for yourself mm -hmm. because not everyone will be with you. Especially, and it's sad to say, but like especially our teachers. Mm -hmm. Like you never know mm -hmm. who will be stand by your side or just turn against you and in, instantly in that moment. And it's yeah. like it's not only in like places where you're just like. Um, in school or like out in the mall. It's like places where you kind of think that are safe and mm -hmm. all that stuff. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And cool. that is it's very important you say that because even at homes, mm -hmm. you hear those situations where the husband is maltreating the daughter, mm -hmm. but the one the mother looks away or she has to turn away, right. and she's not. And you think this is a home, this is a safe place, right. but the mother is not there to protect the daughter. And these are many situations going on in foreign households, yeah. going on in your date. You don't know who's going through that situation. Of which there was this video that was going around on Twitter. It was this mom and like her daughter was trying to tell her that her boyfriend would come to her room and would sexually like harass her and the mom was like why are you always trying to um take all my men from me like every ma boyfriend that i get you're always trying to like and it was just heartbreaking to see that like a mother would respond to her child like that like the yeah. issue at hand i'm telling you that your boyfriend is sexually harassing me mm. and the only thing you could think of is i'm trying to steal your boyfriend she was 14 what does a 14 year old exactly. have like she has no business trying to still grown man from her mother yeah, so it, yeah. it, it was just heartbreaking and like I know a lot of stories and I've experienced you know like sexual harassment from people that I thought were close to me as well so it's always one of those things where well I'm a spiritual person so you always kind of just have to pray and just kind of always have to hope and stand in the gap for people that can't yeah. speak for themselves because if I wasn't vocal who knows like if it would have gone farther than what it went you know so yeah I just want to go back and say that um in a situation that I've been in a place that I really like thought was kind of like a safe zone and everything, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, ironically, church, um, I was standing in like right in front of like the booth where we have in the back where like the sound system and all that stuff is. And it was just rehearsal that day. Mm -hmm. So I decided, you know, I don't need to dress up for like church and all that stuff. So I just wore jeans and a t-shirt, mm -hmm. the most basic outfit you could find. Yes. And while I'm standing there, one of the guys who are like in charge and everything, he gets the back loop of my pants and is just like holding on to it and then just pulls me towards him. And I felt so <laughs> like I was I was a lot younger. Mm -hmm. So I was just like, no. So I just like moved and I went all the way to the front of the church and I sat down where like the pastor was and everything. Mm -hmm. And I sat down there and he comes up later on and he's like, are you OK? And I'm like in my head, I'm like. No. Are you okay? <laughs> all right? Is something wrong at home with you? And I think it's it's important that people need to know these things. But then we have movements like the Me Too movement, and people are still turning that left eye. Yeah. Oh, yeah. it's not that serious. Oh, and I remember um, it's like the lady um, who spoke up against Kavanaugh. How everybody always had ten thousand things to say. Oh, yes. it was a long time ago. Yeah. Oh, it, it was not that deep. And everybody bashed her rather than. This is what is at hand. Many young women, men too, are going through this. What are we doing in place? What are we putting in place to save them? Yeah. That, so that, it's going back to like when like in relationships, like when there's like a fight in school and it's like girl yeah. against girl and it's because of the guy, the girl and the girl are fighting when in reality it was the guy's fault. Mm -hmm. Like it, I never understood yeah. things like that. Like this is the problem. Why are you like going around the problem? Mm -hmm. All right, so. There have been recent movements that stand against sexual harassment, sexual assault, such as the Me Too movement. But are they really working to keep us safe? Um, do you feel as if these such, like these movements are working in the right path? Um, I think as of right now, some people, you know, everybody is different. Some people may think that it's working for them. Some people may not think that it's working for them. And it's something that was just born so it's kind of like you have to give it time just like we're in 2019 and there are still people who you know unfortunately are racist some people who still have those beliefs you know mm -hmm. some people that still live in that time and it's 2019 it has been years later you know so it's one of those things where you just have to hope that eventually everybody would um kind of like get used to it and people would tune in more it will reach out to and farther places mm -hmm. and people can actually see the problem eventually and you know fix you know fix it because um ignorance is literally a disease and a disease yeah. isn't cured immediately yeah. you know so it takes time so you have to take time and let it marinate and let it reach out to other parts of the world and let other people you know tune in as well and participate and hopefully you know it works more than it is now because I don't think it's really having that much of an effect. What I think is the most important thing about these movements is that they're bringing about this idea of awareness. Mm -hmm. Like you mm -hmm. have to be aware mm -hmm. of these situations mm -hmm. because sometimes 
when people turn that blind eye, mm -hmm. they may just be turning their eye or they may not know what it is. Mm -hmm. They may not be able to recognize what is actually happening. For me, I try to take in both sides of account, like, oh, maybe that was sexual harassment, but then again, maybe it's just their way of interacting with each other. Mm -hmm. So again, you just have to be aware, and I think that's what they're doing with these Me Too movements and everything like that, and these different kinds of movements. They're bringing about awareness so that more people can be aware of what's yeah. happening. Mm -hmm. And it's also like, some people, they are aware, but they just don't want to confront it. Like, right. you don't want to, like, really see the truth mm -hmm. in it, you know? Mm -hmm. That's a different story for a different day, you know? Yeah. There's many, we have so many issues, but ignorance is bliss. As much as ignorance is a disease, ignorance is bliss. I rather, many people rather turn a blind eye than figure out how to solve a problem mm -hmm. because what's easier? Mm -hmm. It's easier to be a bystander mm -hmm. than to actually get in the place and defend somebody or actually get in the place and put some things in action. Right, and also right. because they think it has nothing to do with them. I've never been sexually harassed, so this doesn't have anything to do with me. I don't have to worry about this. But you never know when it could happen. Prevention yeah. is literally better than cure. So it doesn't matter, even if it has never happened to you, it doesn't mean that it can happen to the next person. It can be anybody. Yeah. So it's one of those things where you shouldn't just sit back and watch and just not want to, you know, oh, I don't want to get my hands dirty because this has nothing to do with me. It, it yeah. does because at the end of the day, we're a society. As much as you can say, oh, I don't know you like that, what affect me in the long run can affect you because we're in the same society. We're in the same economy at the end of the day. So one way or another, we are linked. So we might as well just stick together and, you know, do something about it if you have the power to, you know. Exactly. Don't just sit by and True not, yeah. you know. I just, just want to say, I had this teacher, right, she's, honestly, she's always, like, spitting, like, wisdom and all mm -hmm. that stuff. So she told us, because we work in the magnet, so we're, like, doing, like, articles and all that stuff. So she told us, ignorance is bliss and it's for the weak. Only the strong can face the facts. Yes. Shout uh, out to that teacher. I mean, we, we are loving it. You know? So, how does celebrities such as R. Kelly or Harvey Weinstein get away with <laughs> sexual harassment? You good? <laughs> get away with sexual harassment for so long. Why do you, like, suppose people are in denial? Why it's, do you think people are in denial? Because they're celebrities, first off. The first yeah. question is celebrities. Yeah. They Money have talks. They have yes. money, they have power. So they feel like they're either invincible or the they can oh, yeah. get out of the oh, yeah. wall or like get yeah, out of what like, their yeah. issue Literally, is. Literally, like recently when R. Kelly was, he was recently arrested, one of his fans bailed him out. Yeah. One of his fans bailed him out. So it's like once you have so much power and once you have so much effect on people, like you become, it's almost like you become above the law, like whatever you do. And like his recent interview, like I don't, did you expect people to really believe that it wasn't you? I don't, I really don't understand. Like, do you really funny. believe that mm -hmm. you're so above yeah, everyone but, else that yeah. you're just supposed to say it and we're just supposed to say, okay, R. Kelly, it wasn't you. We're sorry. No, you can't. Like, we're sorry. It's <laughs> mental illness. It's like, okay, so thinking back on it, it's like the world of like celebrities, so we kind of look at it like it's a paradise. Like if I just had more yes. money, yeah. I'd be able to do what I exactly. want. So that's how we look at it. Like it's a paradise. So you don't really think that nothing can go wrong. Like all these people, they got there because of hard work and they did what they had to do and all that stuff. So okay, right? Kylie Jenner is mm. self-made. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. confused. <laughs> <laughs> but like still, you're looking back on it. Like Family it's, made it's <laughs> like you look at it like nothing can go wrong with them, but yet right. they're still people. Mm -hmm. They exactly. do wrong. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's especially hard, especially like I did not look up to these people, but especially when you look up to the person yourself, because mm -hmm. with celebrities, you don't see their personal lives. Mm -hmm. You don't know exactly like for me, you don't know exactly how I got right here. Mm -hmm. You don't know exactly where where I am at this point with celebrities. It's kind of the same way They you see their celebrity lives. You see them in front of the camera smiling, having fun. You know, wow, Beyonce knows Oprah Winfrey. Like, you know that, like, that's the kind of stuff that you see, but you don't know what you see in their personal lives. And I get, I think that's where the breaking point is because that's when you're like, I just can't believe it. But then I think it's weird because we're in denial about celebrities, but at the same time, you're in denial about your uncle that just touched your little daughter or the right. uncle that just touched yeah. your little cousin. Mm -hmm. So forget the celebrity it's aspect. About I genuinely think as humans, we tend to turn a blind eye against yeah. something yes. that's negative yeah. or something that's bad, something that will eventually turn our 
our plate mm -hmm. into something that's not what we exactly. want to eat. Exactly. And eventually we keep turning that blind eye, we keep turning that blind eye mm -hmm. to the point where a celebrity is able to do that, but that celebrity is doing that exactly. as well as, as much as your exactly. brother exactly. is doing the like same maybe, thing. I don't know, maybe it's because of doubt. I don't know, maybe you feel like your voice won't be like, won't reach out. I don't, I don't really understand like, just like votes, when we say every vote matters, literally every vote matters. So it's like your voice matters as well. So why keep turning a blind eye? If you say, oh, I don't, I don't want to have anything to do with this, then the next person, I don't want to have anything. Then the next person, it's more likely that it won't re, you know, like, Nothing will if, happen. but if all three of you yeah. came together with one voice, it's a, it's a likely, there's a likely chance that you would actually be heard. Right. So it's like, let's hold each other accountable and let's really, let's really be hands on in things that happen in our community because yeah. we live here, so we might as well have a say in what happens, you know? So we all listen to hip hop music, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Does hip hop music relate to sexual harassment being okay or more prevalent? Be honest, we know the lyrics, mm -hmm. be sometimes. Okay. <laughs> so in reality, I think in a certain way, yes. Because in some songs, like we all know, in some songs there are those that did, that just be like, yeah, I touched him or her, and she's gonna like it like that. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I think, and when they sing it, and other people are singing it back, they think it's okay. Mm -hmm. They think it's right. They think, like, they're not really thinking about the true meaning mm -hmm. behind it or what they mean mm -hmm. behind that mm -hmm. point. Yeah. So yeah, it's just yeah, another. Music. Music is music at the end of the day. Like, music doesn't, like, you'll see video, like, cars and, like, models and stuff like that, but that's not real life. So I feel like some people, because at the end of the day, the artists, they're doing it for their money. Once yeah. they get their money, they get their money. But music, some people, I feel like, they enter a new world, I don't know, like in mm -hmm. their mind, they just feel like, yes, like this is real life, so I can do this, I can go and do drugs, I can go. And you have to remember where you're from as mm -hmm. well at the end of the day, so mm -hmm. you have to be mindful of, like that the music that you listen to is just music. After that yeah. music stops, reality hits it's right But as, in as much as that though, you <laughs> see music, <laughs> music are like your artists. Yeah. 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 Many people look up to these artists. Yeah. So if an artist is endorsing such acts and their yeah. music, mm -hmm. aren't we as society held responsible when we listen yeah. and when yeah. we yeah. support? Yeah, definitely. Okay, definitely. okay, before I lose my thought, because no problem. <laughs> it's just no, like, no, no. okay, have you guys seen the show Star? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay, in that show, right, there was this artist that they brought in there, and he had songs that were like, um, that were talking about like, oh, um, women need to serve him and all that stuff, and there was like a shot where he like, there was this like w like lady and she was like by his chair and he she held his drink and all that stuff it's just like things like that gets you mad and what i liked about that was that the main characters which were the three girls like from star they were like this is not right we're not going to support you in our fundraiser event if you keep doing this mm -hmm. so they like protested and wanted to take him off of the show and i'm like mm -hmm. artists against artists need to be held accountable because yes. You can't be saying that you want the world to change if your songs don't change. Exactly. Which ties exactly into my point. We against the bad. You, we can't be endorsing music. We can't be endorsing people that stand for exactly what we stand right. against. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, who is the clarity? Where is the, where is the black and white exactly. in that situation? Exactly. There's this uh, Hispanic quote. It's, um, cara vemos, corazones no sabemos, which translates, <laughs> <Amen>. <laughs> which, translates to, which translates to, we see faces, but we don't know hearts. Okay. Right, okay. so you don't Mommy know, that. you yeah, know, that's... like you can only know the person who's on camera, mm -hmm. but you don't know who they are, like behind, like yeah. right now, like who we are in front of the camera is probably like different than like who we are behind. Yeah, yeah. so. Okay. All right, so we're running out of time, but thank you all for joining me on this episode of the Chat Cafe. Stay tuned for our next show and follow us on social media.